Thou consorted with the witch Elizabeth Selwyn? No. Burn the witch! <laughs> We, the people of Whitewood, Massachusetts, condemn thee as a witch. May the flames cleanse thy soul of its evil, of its lust for blood, and may they bring about the death of Abigail Adams. Listen to my servant. 
grant her this back for all eternity, and I with her. And if we fail thee but once, you may do with our souls what you will. Make this city an example of thy vengeance. Curse it! Curse it for all eternity! And let curse. me be the instrument of thy curse! Hear me, O Lucifer! Hear me! I'm making a curse! Elizabeth Selwyn in 1692. Though, as I've said, little is known today of the actual practice of witchcraft in 17th century New England, superstition, fear, and jealousy drove the Puritans to accuse their friends and relatives of consorting with the devil. Parading around huge bonfires, repeating vindictive chants, they consigned the poor creatures to the flames. The tortured souls cried out in agony as the flames mounted higher and higher. Burn, witch, burn, witch, burn, burn, burn. Dig that crazy beat. Shh. That will be all for today. Tomorrow will be my concluding lecture on the history of witchcraft in 17th century New England. I shall bring along some illustrations which I'm sure will interest you all. I'll bring the matches. <laughs> Maitland! Since you chose to attend these lectures, I had hoped that it was in a spirit of scientific curiosity about the subject. Well, how could you? He takes it all so darn seriously. He's got you all hypnotized. Oh, Miss Barlow. Yes, Professor. Can I see you for a moment, please? What about our date? I mean... Look, um, I'll wait for you outside. Huh? Yes, Professor. Rather a difficult young man, that. I fear that you are more of an attraction to him than my poor efforts. However, in the reading through your papers, Miss Barlow, they show a very sound appreciation of the subjects. I want to go to New England to do my senior paper. Mm -hmm. They're really quite good, you know. Well, I'm not quite satisfied. I feel I need some first-hand research. I want to get the atmosphere, find out how widespread witchcraft really was, what the witches were really like. Well, that might take a little time, you know. Well, I have the time. My brother and I were going to spend our vacation with our cousins. What I'd really like to do is to get a room in the smallest, oldest town in New England I can find. Check through all the town hall records, recheck the libraries, talk to the Puritan descendants, make a really thorough investigation. Your brother is professor of science, Miss Barlow. I hardly think he'd be very interested in the history of witchcraft. Then I'd go alone. You don't think he'd object to that? You leave Richard to me. He's picking me up here for lunch. Hello, Bill. There's a Barlow. Nan here? Yeah, she's in there with him. Well, I don't like her getting mixed up in this witchcraft business. Why not? It's only part of a history course. Professor Barlow. Yeah? Before you go in there, could, could I have a word with you? Oh, sure. Well, it's about Nan and me. Oh. If you're really serious about this, I happen to know of a town in New England. As a matter of fact, it's the identical place where the events occurred that I mentioned in today's lecture, Whitewood. It's uh, quite a small place. It's a little bit off the beaten track, so maybe these directions will help you. Thank you. I think you might very well find what you're looking for there. I happen to know the woman who owns the inn in Whitewood. Her name is Newless, Mrs. Newless. So you just tell her I sent you. Raven's Inn, Whitewood. What's Whitewood? Now, Dick, don't be too upset, but uh, I'm going to change my plans for the vacation. Change your plans? Yes. Going to a place called Whitewood for a week or so to do some research. Who are you? And what about Cousin Sue? Well, she's expecting you for a birthday party on the 17th. She'll never forget. I can still easily make it by then. This is important. My term paper's got to be good. 
It could mean a scholarship. And I've made only a wager. Come on, Dick. You'll have a good time without me. My mind's made up. I'm going to Whitewood. But surely any good encyclopedia will give you all the nonsense you want to know about witchcraft. Witchcraft is not nonsense, Barlow. I'm sorry, Driscoll. Witchcraft, black magic sorcery. To me, it's nothing but fairy tale mumbo jumbo. I'm a scientist, Driscoll. I believe what I can see, what I can feel and touch. The basis of fairy tales is reality. The basis of reality is fairy tales. Well, As a know. scientist, you should be familiar with that quotation. Yeah, well, I don't believe that somebody in Chicago can die of a heart attack because some woman in New Orleans sticks a pin in a wax doll. Maybe you don't. But practitioners of voodoo will claim otherwise. Dick, you're just being difficult. No. When I look into a microscope, Driscoll, I see bacteria swimming, fighting, existing. That's real. These witches, they were persecuted and burnt in the 17th century, were real too, but they weren't witches. They were pitiful human beings, victims of hysteria. There are many eminent scholars who have documentary proof of the actual practice of witchcraft. Yeah, but how effective was this practice? Did any of these eminent scholars ever meet a real practicing witch? Did you ever meet a witch, Driscoll? Perhaps. Oh, come on, you're an historian. No witch ever survived the burning at the stake for all that pact with the devil. In 1692, Elizabeth Selwyn went to the stake. She was buried in a churchyard in New England. And yet three years later... Yeah. Three years later, a new wave of blood sacrifices broke out in the village that had condemned her. The daughters of the elders who had condemned her were themselves found murdered with every last drop of blood drained from their bodies. And afterwards, People came forward to testify that they had actually seen Elizabeth Selwyn. Oh, stop. This would be more effective at midnight with howling winds and crashing thunder, and even then it wouldn't frighten anyone. Dick, I'm sorry, Professor Driscoll. That's all right, Miss Barlow. You won't be the first person to have scoffed at the subject. Honey, when you get to, um, where is it? Whitewood. Ah, yes, Whitewood. Well, send me a picture postcard of a witch. If possible, autographed. Now, uh, let's have some lunch, eh? I'm sorry, I have a date. Nan, darling, I still don't see why you have to go off to this Whitewood place. No? I thought we were going to have some time together during this vacation. You know I want to be with you. It's just this is important. Look, what the heck can you find that hasn't been found before? I don't know. It's just that maybe, hidden in some attic or buried in some old antique shop, there's something that might give a whole new outlook to the subject. Oh, what new outlook can there be? You're a science student, honey. You know how important research is. But this isn't about anything real. This is just superstitious people burning silly old women. But suppose the women weren't silly. Suppose they really had a pact with the devil. A pact that could have supernatural power. Oh, come on. What kind of power? I don't know. Oh, look, it's no use, Bill. We both tried our hardest to talk her out of going. Do you really think she will find anything worthwhile? Well, I think we have to respect her desire to find something new, even if we even if we don't agree with the subject. Agree with it? I've never heard so much nonsense as that guy Driscoll talks in all my life. Well, here I am, all packed. Oh, I suppose there's nothing I can say will stop you from going, huh? Yeah, well, I'll, uh, I'll put this in the car. I still hoped you'd change your mind, Nan. Don't worry, darling. I'll be back as quick as I can, and I'll write. Well, don't forget me altogether, huh? <laughs> I won't. Give Sue my love, and don't forget we have a date at our party. Goodbye, darling. Excuse me, can you help me? I seem to be lost. Sure, if I can. 
I'm looking for the Wamport Road. Wamport Road? Hardly anyone uses that anymore. Well, my friend gave me the directions. Uh, take Road 28A, turn onto the Wamport Road, bear left at the fork through to Whitewood. Whitewood? Uh, am I that far away? No, ma'am, not far. Not many God-fearing folks visit Whitewood nowadays. If I were you, I'd... Uh, if, if you'll excuse me, I'm in a hurry. Which way is it? Well, follow this road about two miles. You come to a fork. There'll be a sign, Wamport Road. Turn left, keep straight. There'll be Whitewood. Thank you very much. Wamport Road? Wamport Road, yes. Oh, good. I was afraid I missed it. Is it uh, Whitewood you seek? Yes. I do. Uh, would I be imposing if... No, of course not. Get in. Thank you. I think the Highway Commission would do something about these roads. Watch out. Here comes another bump. What is your mission in Whitewood? Mission? Well, I'm going there to do some research on witchcraft. Professor Driscoll gave us some very interesting lectures on the subject. And I'm going there to get some original source material. Do you know Whitewood? I've known it for many years. Do you go there often? Fairly often. Oh, then you must know the Raven's Inn. I shall be resting there. Oh, so shall I. Oh, my name's Nan Barlow. My name's Jethro Keane. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you. It's just like a picture out of a history book. I feel as though I were in the 17th century. Why hasn't Whitewood been written about? It's off the beaten path. Few tourists come here. For Whitewood, time stands still. Look at that church. Must have been beautiful. What a shame they let it get so run down. Straight on? Yes, follow the road around. Oh, there it is. What a lovely old building. 17th century, at least. How picturesque can you get? Right by the graveyard. Yes, it has not been used for more than 200 years. Any witches buried there? There are indeed. All in a section of unconsecrated ground. Spooky, isn't it? Well, keep your fingers crossed for me, Mr. Keene. I hope Mrs. Newells has that room. I didn't hear you come in. Are you Mrs. Newless? Mm. Oh, uh, 
I'm Nan Barlow. I was told I might find a room here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was recommended by a friend of mine, Professor Driscoll. Perhaps you know him. That will be all, Lottie. Sorry to keep you waiting. Unfortunately, Lottie cannot talk. I've often told her not to answer the bell. Oh, poor thing. Then you're Mrs. Newless. I am. May I help you? Yes, I'd like to have a room here for two weeks. The hotel is quite full. Oh, the guests are never about at this time of the day. Well, I'm a student of Professor Driscoll's. He told me if I mentioned his name, I'd have no trouble. Well, there is a room I could let you have. It's just off the lobby. Oh, thank you. Oh, Mrs. Newless, that plaque. Is it true that Elizabeth Selwyn was really burnt here for being a witch? She was. And do you believe she was a witch? Come along. I'll show you to your room. I hope you will be comfortable. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is a nice room. The previous occupants have always found it most agreeable. Well, if there's anything you should need, just ring the bell for me at the desk. Thank you. so many months. I've counted the days to this holiday. So have the others. It wasn't easy for some of my guests to get here. Many had to travel vast distances. I was lucky. The last few miles were enchanting. Miss Barlow is very good company. You must be tired, Jethro. Your room is ready. And the festivities. I am prepared. Mrs. Newless, I thought I'd have a short look around town. I won't be gone long. I think you'll find the church interesting. Unfortunately, it no longer has a congregation. He will be pleased. I'm told this was once a house of worship. It is still a house of worship. I am the reverend of this church. As long as the breath of life is within me, this house shall remain God's house. Must have been a beautiful building. For me, it is still beautiful. I'm sorry. What a shame the people have let it fall into such a state. Strangers rarely come to Whitewood. Who are you? I'm Nan Barlow. I'm staying at the Raven's Inn. Why have you come to Whitewood? Well, because I'm interested in witchcraft. Young woman, leave Whitewood. Leave Whitewood tonight. For 300 years, 
The devil has hovered over this city, made it his own. The people in it are his. Evil has triumphed over good here. Look at my church. I have no parish. No one worships here. His is the power. What power? Lee Whitewood. Leave Whitewood tonight, I beg of you. What power? Leave before it is too late. Excuse the mess, we haven't been open long. You have some very interesting things here. Yes, they, they belong to my grandmother. When she died, I came back to sort things out. Oh, I'm sorry. Then you don't live here? No, my family lived here for generations, but I've just been back a few weeks. Would you like to have a look around? Thank you. Oh, I didn't mean to frighten you when I came in. It's just that all the people I've met here have acted like I'm a person from another world. They don't see many strangers here. And I had the most, well, unusual experience with the Reverend. He barred my way from the church. And he talked to me about a curse. And he warned me to leave Whitewood. Can you explain that? No, I can't. Does he often act that way? He's my grandfather. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Oh, it's all right. It's happened before with strangers. Oh, the lack of parishioners, the loss of his sight has made him bitter and suspicious. I'm afraid what with him and the town, I, I was very scared. When I saw your lights, I made a dash for them. I'm glad you did. Um, do you have any books or pamphlets on witchcraft? You do, don't you? A friend of mine... Well, we, we have a collection gathering dust, but why on earth would you be interested in... Oh, I'm sorry, it's really none of my business. Oh, no, that's all right. I'm studying it in college, and I've come here to write my term paper. Well, just wait. I'll see what I can find. That's Elizabeth Selwyn, burned as a witch, March 3rd, 1692. Yes, I know. I saw the plaque in the lobby of the hotel. You were staying at the Raven's Inn? Yes. It was recommended to me by a friend of mine, Professor Driscoll. Alan Driscoll? Yes, do you know him? No, but my grandfather speaks of him. His family come from here. Oh, I didn't know that. Here, I think this will do for a start. What a lovely locket. May I see it? I believe it's quite old. It is. You're very lucky. I'm even more lucky to have found this. A treatise on devil worship in New England. This must be a very rare book. I'm afraid I couldn't afford to buy it. You can borrow it, if you like. Oh, could I? That would be wonderful. I promise I'll bring it back in a few days. You're very welcome, Miss... Uh... Barlow. Nan Barlow. Nan Barlow. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. strange noises in my room. Oh, possibly the water and the pipes. This is a very old inn. No, it seemed to be coming from the cellar underneath. I hardly think so, Miss Barlow. The cellars do not extend beneath your room. 
then why is there a trap door in the floor? The ground was filled in many years ago to strengthen the foundations of the building. But I'm sure well, I... If you insist, I will come and see you. I don't hear anything. Well, just a few minutes ago. Never mind, I'm sorry. You're welcome. But you can see for yourself there is no ring in the trapdoor because there is no reason to lift it. There is nothing underneath but earth. <laughs> towels. I haven't used mine. They're quite clean. Lottie, I've told you before not to bother the guests. Miss Barlow, I thought you might care to join the others. I will as soon as I finish my notes. I'll put some clothes on and join them. A treatise on devil worship in New England. Well, do you find this interesting? Why, it's fascinating. The things I've learnt. I bet you don't know the half of it. And you live right here on a spot where the witches were actually burnt. Listen to this. On Candlemas Eve, February 1st, in the year 1692, a coven of witches, a coven that's 13, some men, some women, whose power came from the devil, gathered beneath the Raven's Inn to perform a black mass in the honor of Lucifer. The witch, Elizabeth Selwyn, later to be burnt at the stake, marked a young girl for sacrifice by obtaining an object of value belonging to her with which to call her, and leaving in its place a dead bird and a sprig of woodbine. The witches sacrificed her on the altar and drank her blood at the hour of 13. What's the hour of 13? Well, personally, I have never heard a clock strike more than 12. Now, how about joining the dancing? In a little while, I promise. Oh, by the way, I seem to have misplaced my locket. I remember having it in my room, and now it's disappeared. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'll ask Lottie. Well, I'm, I'm not saying it was stolen. It's just I remember having it on the dresser, and now it's gone. I would appreciate it. Of course. I'll look into it immediately. Lottie, I have warned you too often about annoying our guests. If you disobey me again, I shall turn you out. And if I turn you out, there will be no place for you anywhere. You do understand, Lottie, don't you?
Ah, Miss Barlow. I'm afraid Lottie is nowhere to be found, but I will inquire about your locket first thing in the morning. Oh, thank you. Where is everybody? Most of the other guests have gone to services. Services on the 1st of February? Candlemas Eve. The night when the witches mocked the rituals of the church. Are you all right, Miss Barlow? Yes, quite. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Miss Barlow. Have you got any idea what's happened to Nan? 
sure she'll show up. She, she probably met a good-looking Hewitt. And is bringing him along to the party. Only they broomstick blew a gasket. Well, it's not like Nan to be late for anything. Aren't you a bit worried about her? Oh, she'll be here. I'm sure she'll make it. Oh, it's probably her now. Well, you answer the door, and I'm going to put a record on for some dancing. All right. Hi, Dick. Bill. Oh, what's the matter? Are you expecting somebody else? Oh, yes, Nan. Look, come in, come in. Well, Nan, didn't you hear you? We made a date to meet here before she left for Whitewood. Well, she probably got held up. Look, look, give me your coat, huh? Ah, Nan was never late for anything in her life. Relax. Take it easy. Join the party. She'll be here. Dick. Dick, I haven't had a letter from Nan in over two weeks now. Well, she's probably been too busy working on her paper. No, no, there's something wrong, I know it. Look, will you do something for me? Mm -hmm. Ring up Whitewood, will you? Ask him, ask him if she's left. You serious? Yes, I am. Okay. distance. I'd like to speak with Miss Nan Barlow at the Ravens Inn, Whitewood. No, I, uh, I don't know the phone number. What? Didn't she give you the phone number? Oh, I know, but uh, that's my sister. They say there's no such place as the Ravens Inn. But that's crazy. She's staying there. Give me the police. in such a hurry, she must have forgotten to return it to you, Miss Russell. She seems such a nice girl, too. Wouldn't have thought she was the sort who'd forget to return a book. We cannot always judge by our first impressions, can we? I'm not usually wrong about the people I lend my books to. Well, perhaps you'll be more careful in future. Thank you for letting me have it. Remember me to your grandfather. Lottie, get out of the way, you clumsy creature. Yes, we're from the sheriff's office. We had a call this evening. A missing person's report from some college kid named Nan Barlow. The party calling said that her last known whereabouts was the Raven's Inn. Nan Barlow, that's strange. Yes, I met her. When did you last see her? About two weeks ago. She came to my shop and, and borrowed this book. It's quite valuable, and so not hearing from her, I decided to come and get it. Mrs. Newless had it. May I? Yes. A treatise on devil worship. I must put this in the report. Peculiar things some of these college kids do nowadays. Well, thanks for your help. Come on, Charlie. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Well? The police sent a car out to the Raven's Inn. Nan checked out two weeks ago. I don't get it. Well, neither do I. Look, these are Nan's books and papers. Go through them, see if you can find anything which might give us a lead. I'm going to pay a visit to a colleague of mine.
Barlow. May I come in? Well, yes, of course, please do. Can I take your coat? I tried to phone you last night, but I, I guess you weren't in. No, uh, no, I wasn't. Would you care to go in the study? Set yourself down. Thanks. You take a drink? Ryan soda. Ice, please. Now what's on your mind? A man's missing. And she has been since the day after she arrived at Whitewood. Really? You quite sure? That's what the police said. What are they doing about it? Carrying out a routine check. I... I don't suppose they can do much more until they've got something definite to go on. Well, I would have thought there was a very great deal more they could do. What? As far as they're concerned, she disappeared two weeks ago, and no one in the village seems to know anything about it. What did you come see me for? I thought you might have some ideas. Why did you send her to Whitewood? Because it was the best place for her research. And you suggested she stay at the Raven's Inn. I'm sure, it's the only inn there is. But an unlisted phone number? The inn has its own clientele, Barlow. It doesn't need to advertise. How do you know it so well? Because I was born. Whitewood. I see. And you'd have every reason to believe she'd be perfectly safe in going there. I've no reason to suppose that she wouldn't be. Nan struck me as being perfectly capable of taking care of herself. Yeah, I grant you that, but why hasn't she come back or let us know? Look, Barlow, I can understand your anxiety, but I'm quite sure there's nothing for you to worry about. Nothing at all. She's probably got absorbed in the subject and gone off someplace. I wish that all of my class had her application. Yeah, well, I'm going to find out where this application led her. I'm going to retrace every step Nan took. I'm either going to find Nan or know what happened to her. I can't stop you from going. No. I'm not afraid. Afraid? Why? Well, if anything did happen to your sister and somebody else went along to try and find out about it. Same thing might happen to them? Possible. You seem to think something happened to my sister then. No, I just think you're jumping to conclusions, Barlow. Maybe, but uh, I shall find her. Professor Driscoll? Yes? I don't like to disturb you, but may I see you? Well, of course, please come in. Good luck in Whitewood. Thanks. I'm sorry, but did you say he was going to Whitewood? Yes, he is. Silly to be surprised, but uh, I've just come from Whitewood. Really? Quite a coincidence. My own family happens to come from Whitewood. As a matter of fact, I was born there. Yes, I know. Please sit down. Thank you. Do you care for a drink? No, thank you. I think you know my grandfather, the Reverend Russell. Russell? Oh, yes, of course I do. How long have you been living in Whitewood? Since my grandmother died a few weeks ago. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, now, how can I help you? I've come about a pupil of yours, Barlow, Nan Barlow. Yes? She came to Whitewood two weeks ago. I met her and liked her, and she told me that she was a student in one of your classes, that you recommended that she stay at the Raven's Inn. That's quite right, I did. Well, that's what I've come to see you about. On the day after she arrived, she disappeared. Oh? Later, the police came asking questions. Her family were worried. I thought you might have their address. And why do you want her family's address? Because I have something of hers I want to return. Well, you just leave it with me and I'll make sure they get it safely. Well, I don't want to trouble you. If, if you just give me their address. As you wish. Her address is Dorchester Street, 225. She lives with her brother. As a matter of fact, he's a colleague of mine. You just met him. He was leaving when you arrived. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got a lot of work to do. I'm rather a busy man at the moment. Of course. Thank you for your help. Not at all. I hope it achieves something. Well, you will remember me to your grandfather, won't you? Yes, of course. Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Russell. Yeah, it's Nan's locket, all right. As far as I know, it's unique. I gave it to her. Where did you get it? The servant at the inn gave it to me. It was strange. I don't think she wanted Mrs. Newless to know I had it. Mrs. Newless? Oh, she runs the inn. Well, why did you come here, Miss, uh, Miss Russell? I found this. It's Professor Driscoll's notepaper. I found it in the pages of a book I lent your sister on her first evening in Whitewood. When she didn't return it, I went to the hotel. What was the book? An old book. A book about witchcraft. 
Do you believe in it, Miss Russell? I don't know. Sometimes I almost think I live with it. Live with it? It's an obsession of my grandfather's. Up till now, I didn't take him very seriously. He's an old man. But now I'm beginning to wonder if what he says isn't true. What does he say? That there's something evil about the village. That on certain nights, the inhabitants leave the streets, close their doors, and stay behind them. That on these nights, the dead come to life. Nights like Candlemas Eve? What do you know about Candlemas Eve? It's in one of Nan's books. I don't believe it. Things like this don't happen today. In Whitewood, I wonder. I'm going to Whitewood tomorrow after classes. I, I can give you a lift. Thank you, but I, I must get back. I can't leave my grandfather alone. He's blind. May I come and see you when I arrive? I'd, uh, I'd like to have a talk with him. Please do. It's the house next to the church. Goodbye. Right. I'll see you to the door. Whitewood? Yes. Won't you take me along with you? It's a dark night for walking. You're the Reverend Russell's granddaughter, aren't you? Yes. How did you know? I know a great deal about Whitewood. Have you ever been there? None, then. Never seen you. To see me is a special privilege. It's reserved for a chosen few. What does that mean? We'll soon be at Whitewood now. This is as far as I go. You will... descendant of those who are cursed. It somehow seems to make it better. Another day. And tomorrow. The witches. Which way to Wampot Road? Straight ahead, fork in the road, you see a sign, turn left. You heading for Whitewood? I am. Many people head this way? Not many. Is this the only way in and out of the town? In this direction, yep. You wouldn't remember by any chance a, a pretty girl in a convertible about a month ago? The Barlow girl. Read about her in the papers. Never seen her again. Told the police. Thanks. Tell me the way to Whitewood, please. Another one. Straight ahead. Fork in the road. You see a sign, Warmport Road. Turn left. Takes you right in. Well, thanks. Let me warn you, young fella. They don't like strangers in Whitewood. Okay, fine. Thanks very much.
Good evening. Good evening. I'd like a room, please. The inn is closing. Oh, I'll only be here a few days. But the inn is closing. When? In two days. Well, if you don't mind, I, I'd like to stay until then. If you insist. And could I... Could I have the, uh, the same room my, my sister had? Still available, isn't it? Yes, it's available. Mrs. Otis, you told the police that my sister checked out. You are mistaken, Mr. Barlow. I told them that on the morning of February 2nd, I went to her room and found it empty, her bed not slept in, her luggage and car gone, and her bill unpaid. Well, you can put the charges on mine. When was the last time you saw her? On the evening of February 1st. It was shortly before midnight. She'd been in the lobby here dancing with some of the guests. She seemed to be enjoying herself. Did any particular guest pay a, a special attention to her? And not that I noticed. Your sister kept very much to herself. You know why she came to Whitewood? It is not my habit to inquire into people's private business. Well, would the fact that she was, she was investigating witchcraft have antagonized anyone in the village? Hardly. There have been other students here, you know. Besides, your sister was a very agreeable and likable young woman. Well, have you any idea where she might have gone? None. Thank you. Now, may I see the room? As you wish. It is this way. If you should need anything and I am not at the desk, you have only to ring the bell. Thank you. Glad you've come. I saw your car outside the Ravens Inn earlier. I wondered what had happened to you. I've been talking with Mrs. Newless, and then I, I took a walk around the village. Find out anything? Everyone here seems to be afraid of something. And you don't think it's just my imagination? I don't know. Who's to say where imagination ends and truth begins? It's, it's nothing tangible. It's just the way they look at you. I felt it too. May I see the, uh, the book that Nan borrowed? Yes. I put a marker between the pages where she must have stopped reading. Just sit down and I'll tell my grandfather you're here. Thank you.
grandfather. This is Mr. Barlow. How do you do, sir? God be with you. Shall we sit where we'll be more comfortable? Here's your chair, grandfather. You must be tired. I am really tired. I have little strength left these days for the fight. Won't you sit down? I'll make some coffee. The fight against what, Mr. Russell? Against the evil that besets this village. The people are creatures of the devil. They know no other god. You mean they worship Satan here? Today? Satanism was never stronger than at the present time. For 200 years, the people of White Wood have carried out rituals that mock the church's teaching. I find it very hard to believe, sir. I... Do not doubt, my son. It is real enough. For years, I struggled against the witches. Their master took away my sight. Seems incredible. I have tried to convince others. They, too, found it unbelievable. But I know these people have a pact with the devil to worship him and do his works. In return, he gives them eternal life. Eternal life? Aye. And to seal this bargain, they must sacrifice a young girl on two nights of the year. When are these nights, sir? Candlemas Eve and the witch's Sabbath. Candlemas Eve, that's, that's February the 1st. And when is the witch's Sabbath? Tonight. Now you know why I came to see you. I had no idea it was so late. May I, may I have a rain check on the coffee? I'd like to have a few words with Miss Nulis again. Of course. Good night, sir. Good night. I'll see you to the door. God be with us. Oh, Miss Russell, do you think that Nan's disappearance is connected in some way with these uh, witches' ceremonies? Yes. Well, I'd, uh, I'd like to come back later, if I may. Please do. And my name is Pat. Well, mine's Richard. I think I feel better now you're here. Well, I'm, I'm going to stay until I find out what's happened to Nan. Take care. Now drink your coffee before it gets cold. You must not see that young man again tonight. Why not? The devil comes in many disguises. I'll get you a spoon. Grandfather, there's a bird in the drawer. It's got an arrow through it. Go and look on the front door. Listen, my darling, this is their sign, the witch's sign. What can we do? We must leave here, leave here immediately. Mr. 
What's happened, Mr. Russell? The witches, the witches have Patricia destroyed it. Oh, Mr. Russell, how? The shadow of the cross. To use the cross. I adjure the old creatures of salt by the living God. been waiting
comes nearer. That will fail. We must finish the sacrifice. with Mrs. Lewis. You stay here. Yes, Doran speaking. No. Oh, it's impossible, sir. It's impossible. I finished my last case. Mm -mm. I'm going on vacation. So long. Add it to my bill, dear. Okay. The chief wants to see you, mister. Come on. Wish me luck, baby. Looks like I've had it. Inspector Doran? Yes. We came out on the pilot ship. They're expecting you at headquarters. Okay. <laughs> Judging from what my chief told me on the phone, I gathered that your men haven't learned much, that there's no lead for you to follow. Mr. Doran, it's even worse than that. Up till now, we kept the whole situation very quiet. But another death, and I'm worried that, that the, the press might be down on us. Murdered, chief? It would seem. We don't know. Don't know? 
The whole thing sounds completely ridiculous. We haven't a single piece of evidence that there was foul play. All we know is that six unrelated deaths have recently occurred, and all within a short distance of a famous grotto near here, and within the last six months. Chief, are you asking me to find a killer or to establish that a murder has been committed? I want you to find out exactly what's happened before a full-scale panic hits us. Assuming there has been a murder, have you been able to discover any traces that they were all the same? No motive. Not even a suspect. Just six women dead. Ah, all women? Yes, women. And all between the ages of 18 and 22. Interesting. Anything to suggest that they might be sex murderers? No, the medical report shows that none of the girls was molested. I know what you're thinking, but I wouldn't have called you in if my men had anything substantial to go on. You're my one hope. That's why I've asked you to come here. Mm, okay. I'll give it a try. I can't guarantee anything, naturally. Mm, of course not. I'll do what I can. The deaths all occurred in a village around 60 miles north of here. A private car will be placed at your disposal. You will find a good road map uh, in the car. There's a device for seeing in the dark also in the car. It's an infrared viewer. You'll need it for the grottos. And here you may need these papers I've prepared for the uh, uh, local police, if you need them at all. I hope not. I'd rather work on my own. I'll go as a tourist on a trip to the grotto. Well, Chief, since that's all the information you can give me, I'd better get on my way. I'll report into you just as soon as I've had a good look around. Oh, one more thing. I don't know whether it's relative, but it's interesting. It would appear that during the last six months, there's been a great many cuts in power. Each time that one of the girls died, there's been no current for about one hour. In other words, whenever a death took place, there's been blackout yes. there. Well, did you uh, check all the power lines? Yes, naturally. The engineer looked all over them. Uh, the overland line was checked, too. It's not been touched. And yet each time, all the lights have failed, just as if someone had pulled the switch. <laughs> get it fixed. I didn't mean to do that, you know. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Uh, I think I'd better uh, go on up to bed. I should get to sleep. Mm -hmm. Go on up. I was only fooling. I just wanted to be friendly. <laughs> Good night, sir. Good night. And what am I left with? Just the wine.
Having trouble? Yes. <laughs> Good evening. Can I help you? I don't believe so. There's something wrong with the electrical system of this car, I'm afraid. And don't those dogs ever shut up? Oh, they'll stop soon. What are you going to do now? It's delightful to know that someone cares. You can hardly spend the night out here. I hope to find a room in the village. If it will be any help to you, I'll send someone to look at the car in the morning. That would certainly be kind. Even my flashlight won't work. <laughs> We're used to power failures. It looks like I'll be staying around this place. So let me introduce myself. Frank Doran. I'm Karen Schumann. I'm working as secretary to the professor up at the castle. And uh, you wait here every night to help cars that uh, break down? Well, not precisely. I was out on my evening walk. You mustn't worry about the car here. There isn't much traffic on this old road. And when will I see you again? Do you intend to stay on here? You could talk me into it. We should have gotten here three weeks ago. Why is that? I'm just about finished with my work for the professor. Oh, what a shame. Anyway, I'd like a chance to thank you. No need to thank me. You'll find an inn not far from here. They'll have a room. Go right straight down the road. Good night, Mr. Darren. Once more, thanks a lot. And when do I see you again? Tomorrow. Uh, I'm curious to see if our local hotel satisfies you. Good night. Good night.
Ja. Oh, good evening, sir. Good evening. Can I help you? Good evening. Have you got a room? A uh, room, sir. These days you can take your pick of them. There's nobody comes here anymore, at least not since the murders began. The, uh, um, maybe I could come inside before you tell me all the local <laughs> scandal. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> but nobody stays, not one guest. <laughs> come you. in. No lights? All these darn power cuts, every other five minutes they're out. Is that your only bag? No, no, the rest is still in my car on the edge of town. Can't seem to start it. Have you had something to eat yet? No, not yet. The maid's gone to bed. But what would you say to a nice cold chicken I got? And a wonderful old wine, huh? <laughs> it's a soul warmer. <laughs> you bet. My soul's freezing. I've been worrying all the time. Where have you been, Miss Carr? Oh, that's sweet of you. That's very thoughtful. But what if the professor needed you? I thought of that. That's why I didn't go to the village. Just in case the professor called. Oh, but you really mustn't worry, so. Huh? Oh, the lights went out all over. All the hounds yelling. The moon hid behind the clouds. The wind blew in the trees. Ooh! It's not good for you to be out alone. And there are ghosts, too. <laughs> Don't laugh, Miss Karen. Don't laugh about ghosts. Oh, what an imagination. It's most likely this gloomy house. And where's the professor? I don't know. Just before midnight, the professor said, John, you can go to bed now. And instead, you've been waiting here for me. I'll take care of you, Miss Karen. It's not good for you to be alone here. This house is evil. this anymore. Uh, how long do you think you'll be staying? Quite a while, if that was a sample of the meals. Usually they're better when I've had some advance notice. You can stay here for as long as you want. Are you here on business, sir? In pleasure. Well, if you're looking for a good time, I can think of lots better places to go for it. Well, that doesn't sound very businesslike. This village seems to be under some kind of curse. In the last six months, we've had six young women die mysteriously. And what do the police say about it? <sighs> police. <laughs> what do they know? They're a lot of fools. They think we're all crazy. You might not know that in the grottos... What's in the grottos? You just keep away. They are very dangerous. What if vampires lived in the grottos? Vampires? Oh, that's only superstition. Not superstition, sir. These are dead who rise at midnight and who come out of their graves and roam in search of human blood to drink. All right, my friend, all right. Tell me all about it in the morning. Uh, I better keep my mouth shut because nobody believes it or even cares. I think I'll go to bed now. I'm very tired. 
Uh, well, then I'll just wish you pleasant dreams. Mm-hmm. Our maid and you are neighbors, and she gets up very early, you know. I hope that you won't be disturbed. I doubt it, because I'm so sleepy, it won't matter in the least. If you're bound and determined to visit the Kratos, then I think you'd better go and visit old Nanny. Good night. Good night. What's all the racket? Let me sleep, will you? Open up, police! <clears throat> Open up or we'll break it down. Okay. Okay. I'm coming. I wouldn't do that. <gasps> all right, my friend, get back there. Better give me that pistol. Or you're going to land in jail, mister. Don't be so sure. You better be ready to explain your steamroller technique or you'll be the one to land in jail. Inspector? Nice to know you can read. We're sorry, sir. He was sorry. We didn't know, you see. All right, I want an explanation, quick. The housemaid, Maria, she's been found dead. Uh, she was in the room next to yours. Murdered? We aren't sure, sir, but... You aren't sure, and you go breaking into rooms like this? Are you a couple of comedians or what? A couple of amateur night cops? Well, you see, these unsolved deaths or murders or, or, or whatever you want to call them are driving us nuts. Well, suppose it was murder, and I'm the murderer. You think that I'd climb back into bed in my room next to her? We didn't stop to think, I guess. Then wouldn't you say it's time you started? Yeah. Well, now I want to see the body. Right this way, Inspector. That makes it number seven, doesn't it? I would say a routine case. And those? Superficial scratches. What's it to you? Are you a policeman? He's a detective, Doctor. Hmm. Bet you were sent here to see about these murder investigations. You're just wasting your time around here. There were no murders. Do you hear? No murders at all. I have already officially stated the cause of death as heart failure in each case. Mm. That's my diagnosis. I'm not going to change it. It wasn't heart failure, doctor, and you know it. We all know it. But you're afraid to say what you know to be true. It was the vampires, I tell you, that killed Maria last night. They want to punish me because last night I took this cross away from her. Get rid of that silly old woman. Vampires. Uh, We're supposed to be living in the 20th century. Uh, Sergeant, I shall want to talk to him later. Right, sir. Look, your presence here, Inspector, doesn't concern me. I hope, though, that you'll try and quiet some of this talk about murders and vampires. You could have done it long ago yourself, you know. What does that mean? It means when you made out your death certificates, you stated such vague causes. That's what started the rumors. What should I have put down? Death by vampire bite? The fact you couldn't be sure and that the cause of death was unknown, and then you perform an autopsy. You must know what that is, Doctor. He's a strange man. Always been like that? What do you mean, Inspector? A man must ask questions, especially when he's a doctor. All this vampire talk. I'll have to prove they don't exist. Uh, don't, sir. Please don't. It's too dangerous. You're not ready yet to have a meeting like this with uh, the such things uh, with vampires. It means certain death for us humans. Unless... Unless what? You had better go see Nanny. It's open. 
You who come here from the police, welcome. Hello, Nanny. Uh, I'm here from the... I know. Come here. Listen. Yes. You're the one. I bid you welcome. You come from afar. Over the great waters. You live at home in a great tower. It is good you are fearless. But still you trust in the power of God. And if your heart doesn't turn to stone, you will conquer the powers of darkness which threaten you. This is your lifeline, as it is at this moment. See where it fades and gets thinner. Understand this. It means much danger for you. They know that you plan their defeat now. If you do not heed me, you will find your life quickly wiped out, like this suit. Each night at midnight, they leave the grottos, gliding over their graves, to visit sleeping ones in their beds. I have seven deaths which are to be solved. Have you? You won't bring one of them back to life again. These women have lost their mortal souls. Souls are the church's concern, aren't they, Nanny? These murders must come to a stop. The guilty one must answer to justice for them. He will answer. Judgment Day, he will. I can't wait that long. I must solve this case. What a pity to lose your life. If it's true, this murderer is aware of what I plan and why I've been sent to this place, and still greets me with the death of another woman sleeping in the room next to mine, then I... No, no, no. No, you mustn't look at it like that. No, it didn't happen that way. Maria was doomed to such a fate. And even if you'd not been sleeping in the room next to hers... Maybe. But who are they? Where are they, those who murdered that girl? I've got to find... They are in the grottos where they were forced over 200 years ago by a curse. They come forth at 12 o'clock for one hour minus one minute. Come out in quest of the, of the blood of young women which they drink, thus making their bloodless shells into new vampires for eternity. I can't arrest vampires. No, you cannot arrest them, though you can save their souls, if you have faith. What must I do, Nanny? How can I recognize them? But you can't recognize them. They are like me and you. When they show themselves, when you see a vampire truly, there's no escape left for you. The fangs of the vampire are already thirsty for blood then. There is no means by which you may escape. You'll be lost. Unless... Unless what? Bend your head. You must wear this. It will be useful to protect your body. Beware, though. It will not protect your soul from the spirit's evil enticements. They will try all their wiles to get you to remove this cross which I placed about your neck. They live in the loveliest of bodies. Look. Watch how enticingly they dance. You must hide the cross. This was ground from the thorns of mountain roses, which on Volpurgis night are in full bloom. The night when the witch's fires burn on the mountains. This is the weapon against them, against the dark powers. When you find a new victim of the vampires, at once sprinkle this powder on the freshly made wound and 
the wound will vanish. Vanish completely. And the maiden is restored to life. Well, where's your jug? No, no, I didn't come here for wine. Where's the inspector? Inspector? What do you want with him? Forgive me, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, Inspector Doran, am I right? You are. I bring greetings to you from Professor von Adelsberg. The professor would like Mr. Doran please to come stay with us at the castle. Oh. I find the accommodations here are very good. Though it seems I won't get much sleep. Give my respects to the professor and say I'll be delighted to accept. <laughs> That's fine. Oh, uh, just a moment. Is the professor the employer of Miss Schumann? the employer. Oh, yes, that's right, sir. Stefan! Where are you? He's down in the cellar. Oh. Oh, by the way, my diagnosis was correct. It was heart failure, as in the case of the other victims. Mm hmm? I've said they might prepare the body in her room. Well, it's none of my business. I will be at the castle. The professor asked me to stay there. Oh. He's a peculiar man. The professor isn't usually that hospitable. Tell me, doctor, who is this professor? What kind of a man is he? What's he doing here? We don't know. He came here six months ago, accompanied by a servant who's colored. He began by saying he owned the castle, which all these years had stood deserted on the mountain. He took possession when his claim was honored officially. And then? Nothing. They gossip so much in the village, particularly about foreigners. And when the other one is black, they have great material. Mm. Then we've suddenly got a black vampire. Right when it's also something which these peasants can't understand, then they run to Nanny. Stupid superstitions for old women. Goodbye, Inspector. Thanks, Doctor. <laughs> ah, if you will allow me to, Inspector, the best in the land, over 200 years old. Mm, looks just like blood. Get it from a vampire? No, sir, no. You mustn't even think like that. And you certainly shouldn't say it. Uh, did the colored man mention I was asked by the professor to stay at the castle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did, Inspector, yes, he did. You will certainly be a lot more comfortable and no dead woman in the next bedroom. And when your car is repaired, you may as well leave it in my courtyard. Because, you know, there's only a footpath leading up to the castle. Yes, but first I'd like to see the grotto. You want to go in there alone? No, no, not alone. My pistol will be along with me. <laughs> that won't help you if you see them. The dead can't be killed again. Since you know so much, why don't you join me? Me? All the saints protect me. I'm an old man, 
And besides, uh, I'd really rather die in my own bed. Who'd look after my inn if anything happened? Tell me that. Yes, I suppose you're right. Uh, but uh, here's a real good lantern. I think you'd better take it with you. Have you read this yet? Another death has taken place. Under the eyes of the police, another woman has just been killed. Are you planning to send an investigating team? No. Give Dorn a chance anyway. He only started the case yesterday. Oh, but the newspapers are sure to make a big story of this. I hope for the best. In view of the situation, we'd better get in contact with Inspector Dorn immediately. He must make a blood test on the girl. Going to the grotto, Mr. Doran? Well, if this is the right way, yes. Shall I come with you? Not afraid? Uh, no, if the inspector's not, why should I be frightened? Here. John! John! Where are you? Who told John that he might leave the castle? He's in grave danger. Oh, Professor, what... Go now. Leave me alone. just don't understand it. What are you looking for? Well, I'm not so sure myself. I don't see anything. Why are the men in the village so scared of this old hole? It all looks okay. You're right. They're all stupid. Old women gossip. You. I, uh, I, 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 I'm waiting for the inspector. Uh. It's top secret. Hmm, that's better. Don't laugh, John, but I had a feeling back there among those stalagmites that we were being watched one night in that place and a man would go crazy. I'm not laughing at all, Inspector. I feel just the same way. What was that? Well, this isn't the spot I care for. Say, Inspector, do you think vampires like black blood? I'm not sure, John, but I sure like your black skin. Come on. Here you are. One lamp, still intact. And me too. Oh, Inspector, I have a message for you. Thanks. Do you know where one might find the good doctor at this hour? You should find him at his home, I think, sir. Okay, then go tell him that I would like to see him as soon as he can come. Right away, Inspector. Hey, give me some wine. Who 
is that man? You don't need to be afraid that he'll hear you, sir. Thomas has been deaf since he was a child. He's the strongest man in the village. Oh, but he's harmless enough. Watch it. Look. That guy just better not touch our girls. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, well, you'd better tell him, huh? Yes, yes. Or else he'll answer to me. Do you understand? Um... all over for you. You were in the greatest of danger. Stupid man that you are. As if there wasn't already enough talk here about us. Difficulty upon difficulty. And on account of your foolishness. Oh, uh, sir, forgive me. I was wrong to go. Did you invite the inspector as I instructed you? Oh, yes, I have. Uh, I did it. Mr. Doran thanks you, and he'll come to the castle tonight. You can count on him coming. Good. Yes? What's the matter, Inspector? You sent for me, I believe. Yes. Read this while I finish packing. Well, that's simple. It's only a matter of opening a vein and taking some blood. But what do you and the police hope to find? Do you think it was poison? I wouldn't know. There's gossip. You've heard the talk that's going around. Don't tell me you believe that gossip. It was idiotic of you to go and see Nanny, you know. She's just an old witch. Huh? I thought you didn't believe in old witches. Now that they've accepted you as another believer, you've added support to the rumors that vampires are about. The dead are dead. Well, you must know. Come on, let's visit the dead girl. Those idiots at the powerhouse. They can drink all right, but just try to get them to work. Don't worry, I'm bringing a candle, Inspector. This just can't be true. Well, what's your diagnosis this time? must have gotten wind of the fact that the police plan to make a blood test of the corpse. Embarrassing for you, Inspector. Well, Doctor, it really interests me that you choose to use the word murderer. Does that mean maybe you agree that these women met uh, unnatural deaths? That's a new opinion, isn't it, Inspector? Inspector no you... discussion. I will say that you've changed your mind when I make my report out. Your new diagnosis will help. That's all. I think you can go now, Doctor. Good night. Stefan, please see to it that the good doctor doesn't break his neck on the stairs. He's my star witness. Good night. Professor von Adelsberg? Yes. Frank Dorn. Come in. Thank you. I'm pleased to meet you, my dear Mr. Doran. Welcome to my humble home. Do please make it your home. My entire household is at your disposal. Thank you for your kindness, Professor Van Allensburg. My secretary will take you to your room. My servant has this evening off, you see. Good evening, Mr. Doran. Oh, I see you made again. Have you eaten yet? Uh, yes, I have. The innkeeper is a fabulous cook. I must thank you, Professor. Well, where did he go to? We have no electric light in the castle. 
Come along, I'll show you your room now. Thank you. I didn't expect this. Well, what then? Oh, a small dungeon, a water jug, a few rats. <laughs> <laughs> Strange. But somehow laughing seems wrong in these old rooms, doesn't it? <laughs> these old walls could really tell some tales. I'd rather you told me about how your work's going. No, it's going splendidly to welcome me. They've killed a seven. Yes, Maria from the inn. Yes, we heard ghastly. And this evening, her corpse disappeared. But now that can't be true. Uh, I wouldn't know, but I'm sure that the good people in this town will come up with an explanation. Ghosts or vampires have stolen it away. Well, that's only natural for superstitious people. What do the police say? We're giving no comment, and it's my opinion the police will clear this whole situation up and without using a magician. I'm so grateful that you could accept the professor's invitation to stay here. It's good to talk to someone. I mean that sometimes it's very lonely up here. I hoped that you might sit. Oh, but never mind. It seems that the professor takes all your time. My time has gone into 1,300 articles about experiments with blood. Blood corpuscles, blood groups, blood cells, anything and everything about blood. Exhausting work. Please, let's not talk about it. I must go now. Oh, the professor is expecting you downstairs. Just a minute, Karen. Yes? Ever wear jewelry? Would you like to buy me some? Oh, well, not exactly. But I've always felt that a little jewelry can flatter a woman. Most of the women around here wear small crosses. Most of the women around here believe in vampires, don't they, Mr. Doran? Good night. Hmm. Break out of here. Everything all right? In this house, we don't tolerate vanity. I thought that I'd made that clear when you first got here. Come back again some other time. Mm? Mm? But I'm free this evening. I I invite you all to drink with me. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
I'm very sorry, John. You mustn't pay any attention. Why should That's right. I? Because he's deaf. He's not altogether responsible. He isn't exactly right in his mind. It's not his fault. You flatter me greatly, Inspector Doran, by accepting my invitation. It was unthinkable to allow you to continue staying at that terrible hotel, and especially with a body in the room next to yours. The pleasure is mine. Thank you, Professor. I appreciate your concern, but I was spared the necessity of sleeping with a body in the room next to mine. How's that? The girl has disappeared. What? Has the murderer stolen the body? Your view is reminiscent of someone else's. It's the one the doctor had. Namely, the murderer is trying to remove any clues. Huh. Is there a better answer, Inspector? Mm, not right now. Please. To my illustrious guest. Thank you. When the weather's bad and you can't... Uh, go out walking. My library is rather well stocked. Feel free to use it. You'll find that there are all manner of books here. Surely there are some in your field. You see, my interest is legal medicine. Please treat the castle as your own. Uh, two or three of the doors are locked. Will you please respect that? It's my laboratory. My experiments are not to the stage where I wish them publicized yet. You understand? Well, of course I do. Though it seems ungrateful, I know. May I ask you why you have invited me here, Professor? Oh, but naturally. <laughs> Quite frankly, I was curious. You're the first actual detective I've ever met. <laughs> then I must take care not to disappoint you in any way. <laughs> I shall act like a detective all the time. May I say I wish your first night with me brings you contentment and peace? I know it will. I'm afraid that I'm keeping you from your work. <laughs> the ladies, they must babble. <laughs> yes, in my old age, I need much less sleep, you see. We must see the inspector. Well, do you hear? He's got to come along with us right now. He's still sleeping. Then go and wake him up. He'll be real furious. Now open but the door. But it can't, can't be done. Why can't it be done? We're in Professor a hurry. Professor Adelsberg told me that no strangers are to be allowed in. Even police. You wait here. No, no, too nervous. Much too scared. Nervous? It gives me the creeps. I wonder how the inspector can sleep here. You'd almost say it was a cemetery. I'd much prefer the inn. Hmm. Smells exactly like death. Oh. Smells like everything was rotting. Well, what if the inspector can't smell very well? Can't smell that? Oh.
Inspector. Oh. Inspector. What is it? Two policemen for you outside, Inspector. Yes, yes, I'm coming. The inspector, did you sleep well? Oh, I had a wonderful dream, John. Two beautiful, exciting, and charming girls standing there by my bed. And... <laughs> then what, Inspector? <laughs> uh, oh, no, no, no. It was only a dream, John. Do you dream any better, uh, differently? Um, no, I don't. No better. Dream ladies are no good. No good. Well, well, now shall we go and see what the law wants me for? Mm. What's up? Well, we finally uh, found her. Maria? Uh, uh, yes. She's in a well down at the bottom. Who was it that found her? Uh, uh, yeah. It was Nanny who found her. She was on her way to the forest looking for her herbs. And she had to pass by there since the path goes right by the old well. Mm -hmm. And does old Nanny usually look down in the well on her way to the forest? What for? To see if there's water in it suddenly? Uh, 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 Nanny says that she saw some black stuff caught on the edge of the well. Black stuff. Yes, yes, nylon or something. And then she, she, she said she looked down and saw way down there was Maria in a black dress. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Perhaps she wasn't pleased with the white dress she was wearing. Almighty God, you're right. It was a white dress, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, we better go. Yes, Inspector. John, give my apologies to the professor, will you? Don't forget. It was black. Go get me a ladder. There isn't one long enough, Inspector. In the whole village, there isn't one. Mm. Bring me that piece of wood over there. Yes, yes sir. Go get it to the Inspector. Here you are, Inspector. Yes, sir. Uh, careful, Inspector. I need someone to help me. Oh, sorry. Steady. Inspector, you at the bottom? Now hold the chain up and fasten a strong rope to it, then lower it again. Yeah, right away. Yes, sir. Now, let's get him back up. All right, now. All together. Faster, faster. That's right. A vampire. Vampire. Come on, let's get him up. What do you say now, medicine man? I think it's quite clear. The killer hid her in the well, hoping that no one would come across the body. I'd like to see that man, doctor. Must be quite an athlete. Why? He jumps with a corpse in his arms out of a second-story window, at the same time making sure the window is locked from the inside, and then he disappears without a trace. And why does she have her eyes open? A result of the fall, I should think. That sounds logical, but where did she get all those frilly nylon undies? That's obvious. The killer had to get her other clothes because what she was wearing might give some evidence against him. I'm curious what Nanny thinks of this theory. I've already told you. But you won't believe me anyway. Last night there was one peering through my window. At midnight. The hour when they roam in search of blood. Will you stop all this nonsense? It's all useless chatter. It's now a police case. 
You're wasting your time with this fool. What now, Inspector? Have you got a morgue here? Yes, in the graveyard chapel, sir. And will you see to it that they get the body over to the morgue? Right. All right, Inspector. Will you tell me what you're getting at? I'm not getting at anything. I'm making use of the death certificate that you've already signed. Here, yeah, didn't you ask for a blood specimen? I don't see what you think you'll find. Why don't we let a pathologist see what he thinks? But that suits me fine. Let someone else take the responsibility. That blood is all the proof you need. Hundreds could be killed with this blood. This is vampire's blood. Hello. Hello. Can you give me this number, please? Now, incidentally, remember I got uh, a telegram yesterday. I wondered if there was anyone else here when it arrived. Uh, I don't remember. Oh, yes. There was that Negro, the castle servant. He wanted to mail something. He gives me the wellies he does. I don't trust him for a minute. That's my opinion. Yes? Here you are, Inspector. Hello. Chief? Yes, it's Doran. I have some difficulties here. Sure. You're right, but suppose I told you I think it's the supernatural. Oh, no. Of course I've not been drinking, and I'm not crazy. I'm asking for help, Chief. Send one of those geniuses of yours down here. No, no. That would set the press off for sure. I've every confidence in you, Doran. I'll send nobody. We have to be ready for everything. If you can't clear this up on your own, then well, you just tell me, please. But don't worry me with that business I get from my own agents. There's something else, Chief. Right after I got here, the infrared viewer disappeared. You must just manage on your own somehow. There's no way I can help. If you can't crack it, tell me. OK, I'll keep at it, Chief, naturally, and make some progress. That's all. It's an official call. Goodbye, then, Inspector.
Good evening, Professor. How often must I tell you that you should knock first? You won't need to stand for my bad manners very much longer, Professor. I've typed all the last experiments. That finishes my work here, and I can leave in the morning. Oh. You plan to leave us so soon? I know it's been hard on you. I'd hoped that you would think of staying. That's most flattering of you, Professor. But our agreement was only for three weeks. I know, I know. You fit so well into the surroundings of this old place. You're rather like new blood for this antique, disintegrated place. I've grown rather fond of you. You're really very kind. Uh, not at all. Well, I must work now. Would you be good enough to get the Bible that's in the Countess Barbara's quarters? And where's that? It's directly in back of the choir of the castle chapel. I'm sure I can find it. And what should I say to the Countess? <laughs> well, I doubt very much you'll find her, since she's been dead for 200 years. But bring along my Bible. It's lying on a pillow placed close by her bed. Meanwhile, perhaps I'll be able to find a way to persuade you to stay. Tell me, what's the quickest way to get this sample of blood to the city? You won't be able to find a, a single soul who will touch that cursed stuff. Except Nanny or the doctor, they will. Right, you are. I can send Nanny into town in my car. Are you a driver oh, for Oh, you won't get anybody from here to go against the will of the vampires. They're too afraid. What have the vampires to do with a blood sample? You try it yourself, then, Inspector. I'm willing to bet anything you want that you won't get anybody to do it. Well, how far is the city? It's around two hours' trip there and back. If anybody wants me for anything, I'll be back in two hours. Ha! Huh. I doubt if you will even get started by then, Inspector. Now, what's gone wrong with this stupid car? Uh, the mechanic took the battery away this morning to be charged. Uh, so why not relax? Mm. How am I supposed to get this to the city? I guess you don't, Inspector. Unfortunately, the doctor has the only other car in the village. And he's been called away. I'm looking for Miss Karen. You, Professor, do you know where she might have gone? Most likely she's up in her room, packing. She's not in her room, sir. Don't worry. 
When she's hungry, I'm sure she'll turn up for dinner. Miss Karen's vanished. Did you look everywhere? Everywhere I could, but not there. Uh -huh. I'll wait here, Inspector. Mm. I'm scared. It's no good. The dirty work's fallen to me, I see. Hmm? Oh, but you don't believe. <laughs> and so, uh, you're not afraid. You'd better stay right here. And... Yes, I'll wait right here. And come at once. If I should call. Karen! I'll come. Karen! Come at once. Karen! Here! I'm coming. I'm here! Karen! I'm here! What kind of a spook house is this? Oh, please, take me away, Inspector. First, the name's Frank, and second, don't worry, I'm here. It'll be all right. Come along. Uh, wait. Coffins are cheap around here, or well, they haven't got enough beds. Has someone used this thing as, as a bed, do you think? Mm, yes, just look for yourself. This was slept in, I'm sure. But, Professor? And it's a screwy idea, but it seems that he's been reading detective stories. Oh, hmm? oh please, let's go. Of course. for vampires. And, and that was in that place? Yes, in the coffin there. The mysteries of black magic. Frank, what is it? What's wrong? Hello? Yes? The generator's on full. And still no power is coming through. 800 kilowatts are pouring out, and still nothing happens. Frank, I'm frightened. Inspector. The doctor wants you, Inspector. All right. What is it? Like awful news, Inspector. What is it now? The corpse is gone again. Have you looked down the well? We've looked all over. Is there any power in the village? None at all. The whole village is dark. That's what gave me the idea of taking a look at the body. And the dogs have begun howling? Yes. But how did you know? Incredible. I think you're right. There's something to what you say. Karen, we've got to get to the bottom of this. Bring my coat, please. Come along. Finally admitted that we're up against something inhuman. There isn't anything else I can think. Well, at last. Inspector. <gasps> Was the door forced, Doctor? 
No, I made sure it was guarded by the policeman. How about the window? Locked from inside. Footprints around the window? Uh, none. Hard ground? No, soft earth. Then have the church bells rung. Why, sir? Well, within the next 15 minutes, I want all the men assembled in the marketplace, understand? Right. And each one must bring six torches with him. Right. We will search the whole area. We'll search till we find that body. Possibly until morning. I won't give up until we have that body lying in its coffin. And I'll sit on it till it's lowered into its grave. I'm cold, Frank. I'll wait at the castle. Alone? Oh, but I won't be. John will be there with me. You should let her go. This isn't work for women. All right. Be careful, though. We don't know who these creatures are. Uh, Constable, Inspector. I want you to stay with this lady until we get back. All right, Inspector. In what? When I tell them that we are dealing with some supernatural phenomenon and not That's humans. That's a strange thing to say, Inspector. Yes, yesterday I would have laughed if someone had suggested that. But now I'm not so... What was that? Karen! No! 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 What are you doing? Nanny's powder. Dead. Quick, let's get her to Nanny. I've got to be sure I've done it right. You forget that I'm the doctor. This isn't a case for a doctor. I'm sorry, you're right, Inspector. It's right, my boy. You have successfully broken their spell by doing exactly as you were supposed to. And now go. Find their master. When you do, destroy him, and in doing so, you will lift his curse from us. You said yourself it's impossible to kill these creatures. No, they cannot be killed. They must be destroyed, I said. But one must know how. And one must also believe. You, doctor, you didn't listen to me, did you? You thought me an old, foolish, superstitious woman. Only he is able to free us from the vampire's curse. When the master is found, I must give you these. Don't let them be taken from your hands. You must quietly come upon him in his coffin. One hour after midnight, he returns after his nightly wanderings and sleeps in his coffin without peace. Restless 
and yearning to rise again and spread his death. Then you shall place this stake over his heart. You've only time for three strokes. I will need your help, and together we will destroy him. Oh, the men, sir, they won't go in there. Oh, no. You're fine heroes. And I'll go alone. I'll come with you. Doctor, you get some men and take a look around the village. Right. Well, come on. I'm sure it moved. where I was locked in. And those stairs lead to the room with the coffin. We must go through the castle. Well, what's the matter, John? What are you doing here? I'm getting out. And, and I won't ever come back here, either. What happened, anyway? The professor came back suddenly. Show me. Where is my book? You've stolen it. He wouldn't even listen to me. When I said it wasn't me. Then he went wild and then he said, Get out. And so there was nothing else for me to do. I got out of there. Well, what are you going to do now? I heard, Inspector, that Miss Karen was leaving in the morning. I want to work for you, Miss Karen, from now on. That's terribly sweet, but, John, my salary isn't big enough to afford uh, we'll you. We'll talk about this in the morning. We must get back to the grotto, John. Come. But, but the professor is... Come on, come on. Hmm. Here, let me try it, sir. <laughs> Pretty strong.
am I to do with her? Take her upstairs. She's finally found peace. You don't believe in vampires. I do. Sorry, Miss Jan. Sam, I think by now you know every hole in this road. I know all the holes, Miss Jan, but on this road there's no place to go but in them. Well, it's a good thing Africa hasn't completely changed. I was afraid after ten years you'd be driving me home on a super highway with drive-ins on both sides. Nothing much has changed in this part of Africa, Miss Jan. Not in ten years. Not in fifty years. It wasn't a man. It was one of them. I'm truly sorry, Miss Jan. But I couldn't stop. There's your grandma now. She'll tell you I was right. She's waiting for you. We hit a man, right over him. Not a mile down the road, Sam wouldn't stop. I saw him, ma'am, with the seaweed on him. He stood in the middle of the road and tried to stop the car. Get Miss Jan's things up to her room. But that man, he's badly hurt or, or dead. There's no one on the road. Remember that. I saw him. Sam saw him. He admits it. Go inside. Freshen up, Jan. So you still believe in this voodoo? I thought it was a nightmare from my childhood. I thought everything would be different now. Later on, Jan, you'll decide for yourself. I'm sorry to have to start like this on your first night back. Here's to a calm crossing which we already had. The hook dragged anchor at 18 fathoms. Okay, okay, lower the launch. Okay, sir. No, I don't want any more things. <laughs> and here's to a million bucks in diamonds, which we're soon gonna have. You're getting drunk. 
Oh, why not? In a few days, I'm going to deck that lovely, beautiful body of yours with diamonds from head to toe. Now, what would I do with diamonds on my toes? Never mind. It was a sweet thought. And what are you going to do with your diamonds, Jeff? Me? I'm going to stuff mine in a nice little box I rent at the First National Bank in New York. Oh, now that's real romantic. Uh, you're listening to Port, Mona. Your husband's the man over there. Can't you take a friendly little kiss without trying to make something out of it? Now, how about me, Mona? Don't I get a kiss, too? You don't get a cut of the diamonds, Doctor. Well, if I had known what went with them, I would have insisted on a share. Well, listen to the old boy, a regular Romeo. Lunch is ready, sir. Johnson. Huh? He's dead. I couldn't have hit him. I'm not that drunk. I don't think you did. His neck's broken. Well, who did it? Who was that? Get the others. Let's get them to shore. such things at school. I thought it was a man. I saw him walk right into the water. He came down to watch the ship arrive. I didn't expect them so soon. But after what happened to you on the road, I knew they'd be here tonight. I've been expecting you. This is my great-granddaughter, Jan Peters. How do you do, Miss Peters? This is George Harrison, Mrs. Harrison, and uh, this is our diver, Jeff Clark. One of my men has just been murdered. I know. I heard the voices and the shots. What's going on? I wrote. I warned you of the danger. You mean that voodoo stuff? It was a man. I fired at him. And you hit him. But it didn't help, did it? I want the police. The police will do you no good, Mr. Harrison. They're far away. We'll have to bury the poor man. Tonight? Well, he's dead. May as well bury him. Police want to dig him up later? That's their business. There's no casket. But I'll get someone to sew him up in sailcloth.
These are the graves of the first group that came after the diamonds. That was in 1906. They were British. This was a German expedition in 1914, just before the outbreak of war. What I want to know is, how'd they all die, Mrs. Peters? Another British group tried their luck in 1923. Portuguese in 1928. American showed up 10 years later, 1938. Yours is the sixth attempt to recover the diamonds. Whose graves are these? The first one is for your dead sailor. The others for the rest of us. She's trying to scare us. She wants the jewels for herself. I've learned that no one who comes for the diamonds can be frightened away. guest room. According to Eggert, the Susan B. is lying in about 100 feet of water on a sandbar. Say, uh, where is Eggert? He's having a powwow with the old lady. <laughs> Maybe you can find out why the old lady was so anxious to have those graves dug in advance. Now, if the sandbar hasn't moved, it should be about here. Well, this one baffles me. It's, um, it's pre-Christian, of course, but it, um, it doesn't seem to be truly African. You know, it's closer to those figures on Easter Island than anything I've seen. You've picked the prize of the collection quick enough. <laughs> I guess you do know something about Africa. Just who are those people you're with? Well, as I wrote you, I've spent 20 years researching the legends of the Susan B. Mr. Harrison owns the salvage ship. He came for the diamonds. I came for the story. I think I'd die happy if I could complete the research on my book. Not that I'm eager to occupy one of those graves. Only fools are afraid of the grave. There are worse things. Bodies around here must be buried quickly, Dr. Eckert. You mean the climate? Mm, no. I don't like to explain to idiots who think I'm in my dotage, but you should understand. Walking dead. You believing them? And so will you before the week is out. My husband, Captain Jeremy Peters of the Susan B. He was one of them. That picture was made over 60 years ago. He looks almost the same today, except for the eyes. I've seen him. You know the story. The Susan B. put in here for trade in 1894. The sailors discovered a temple with a golden cask full of uncut diamonds. They stole the cask. There was a fight, and ten of the sailors were presumed dead, the captain among them. The others returned to the ship with the cask. Then, surprisingly, 
the ten missing men appeared. Something happened. The rest of the crew was slaughtered, and the ship scuttled in the bay. You think that these ten men that had been killed returned to their ship? They were dead then, and they're dead now. But they're still guarding those cursed diamonds. One of them killed your sailor tonight. They killed everyone who's come for the diamonds. But they're murderers, your own husband. They're dead, I tell you. They have no morality, no free will. They'll kill anyone who tries to steal the diamonds. But what about you? Oh, don't bother me. They seem to know I don't want their precious treasure. It was more than 50 years ago that I heard rumors that my husband was seen around here, and I came back to find out. Slowly, I pieced the story together. I built this house. You want to be with him? With your husband? This dead man? I came to help him return to dust. To find his eternal rest. But how? How can you do that? <coughs> Fool woman again. I'm staying, and so are the rest of you. But if you knew there'd be all this trouble, people killed, why did you let them come? I didn't let them do anything. Edgar Roten told me they were coming. I don't own the diamonds or the bay. But you wanted them to come. Yes. I want them to find the diamonds and then destroy them. Only when the diamonds are destroyed will your grandfather be able to rest destroy them? Do you think Harrison is a kind of a man who would destroy the diamonds after going to all the trouble of finding them? Throw them away because of an old wives' tale about men who died 60 years ago but aren't dead? If they ever find the diamonds, they'll be glad to destroy them. I know what I have to do. And this time, there'll be an end to the diamonds and an end to the walking dead. Aren't you afraid it was a zombie out here? I understand they don't smoke. They're afraid of fire. And you know all about them, too. Only what my grandmother says. And you believe her? No. Then who broke into the house tonight? Who killed Johnson? I wish I knew. I wanted to ask you to leave with the others. Give it up before any more are killed. Do I look like I'm afraid of zombies? Johnson is dead. So are many others buried behind the house. It's not worth the risk. Oh, yes, it is. If those diamonds are half of what they're cracked up to be, my share may come to a million dollars. That's a lot of loot. What is it worth if you're dead? Oh, look, Miss Peters. I may be a dumb diver, but I got an A in arithmetic at PS 81. That's New York. And this is the way it figures. Usually, as a diver, I make a hundred bucks a day. 
And if I'm lucky, I work three days out of every week. That's 15 grand a year. Now, do you know how many years I'd have to work to make a million? 67 years. You better go back to school. Learn how much 60 years of life is worth. Or 50, or 20, or even 10. <laughs> All right, I'll make you a promise. If I get that many, or even half, I'll give up my dangerous occupation. I'll never dive into anything deeper than a swimming pool. Or if, uh, if that makes you nervous, I'll, uh, I'll stick to very dry martinis. Not funny? I didn't think you'd listen. There's something else. Tonight, when Sam was driving me home, we hit one of those men. Not a mile down the road. We hit him hard, ran over him. We must have killed him. I'd like to find out. So would I. Can we get the car? They're supposed to be afraid of flares. Even if I agreed with you and wanted to quit, it's not my show. It's Harrison's equipment and Harrison's money. That's why he waltzes off with three quarters of whatever we find. Right there. Just ahead, I think I see something. It was right over there. Be careful. Out here, maybe a bit down the road. Let's look. Remains of your headlamp. It must have hit something right here. What is it? Seaweed. Water and seaweed. You suppose he could have come from the bay? It just suddenly appeared on the road. toward the road. So he did come from the direction of the bay. He must have been hit back there where we found the glass and the button. He was thrown a few yards, run over down there. Let's go back and see what we can pick up that thing. Jan, you take one side of the road and I'll take the other. See if you can find some more footprints. Jeff! He just picked himself up and walked away. I'd like to follow these. Tonight? No. I'll get something to mark the place. We'll come back with the others in the morning.
Can you hear me? Try to get away while I back him down with these flares. drove off that joker last night with a torch. I didn't know where the girl was taking me. I figured she was leading me in for a setup. So I grabbed the very gun from the locker. You say this mausoleum in the middle of the jungle is about uh, 40 by 20 feet. And no running water or central heating. If you like, we'll pack a picnic lunch and walk over there. Do you think you could find it again? Oh, I should. You kept me up all night making notes. <laughs> you know, Doc, you're going to have to cut me in on the royalties from your book. I think you were right the first time. I'll give you odds, little Miss Sweetness and Light was leading you into a trap. You can bet that she's that old witch at the bottom of what's going on. Good morning. Good morning, morning, Miss Sweetness. Warm milk, Margaret. I want to thank you for saving Jan's life, Mr. Clark. She's very precious to me, and I will be always grateful. Now you got a friend for life, Jack. We all die in good time, Mrs. Harrison. There's a grave waiting for all of us. You old hag! You're dead already. You just don't have sense enough to lie down. Shut up! Well, it's true. She's at the bottom of what's going on around here, and you all know it. I'm sorry, Mrs. Peters, but, uh... You see, she learned her manners as a hostess in Eddie's Front Street Saloon. As She's... I was saying, I'm grateful, and I'll do whatever I can to help you recover the diamond. Thanks, but it won't make any difference now. You see, I've decided to give it up. What? You can't quit like this. I practically taught you the business. You should have taught me the business end of the business. Then I'd be up on deck taking a sun bath and getting 75% while you went below and played footsies with the fishes. We made a deal. I've sunk 30,000 into this. Practically everything I've got. Get yourself another boy. Do the diving yourself. Nobody told me there'd be a crew of cutthroats pushing up the odds. And I don't care who's behind them. Okay. I'll give you another 5%. Maybe he's right, George. We ought to quit. This place gives me the creep. One more word out of you now. What do you do? Put me in irons. What do you want? I did some arithmetic last night, Harrison. You know, 50% isn't hard to resist. I hope you live to collect it. Oh, but I intend to. You see, I'm counting on you to keep me alive. At least until after we get the diamonds. We're losing the whole morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Peterson. You all right? So you're going ahead? Yeah. Harrison talked me into it. Ask Mrs. Peters. But I tell you, I buried that knife in his throat. So you missed a vital spot. Okay, but I should have got a little blood out of that eight-inch plate. Do you believe in the walking dead, Dr. Eggert? All I know is what I've read. What's it say in the books, Doc? Are they supposed to be good swimmers? Well, they wouldn't have to breathe. Well, that's my weakness. I have to breathe. Try to remember that, Harrison. Any last words? Just find the diamond. I'm only going to try and locate the cabin. Fifteen minutes. Don't get yourself killed, Jeff. It would be such a waste. Can you hear me? Telephone okay? Air pressure okay? All right, let's go.
water's clear. But I don't see anything yet. Say number one helmet of yours is leaking. Front port gasket. Where'd you get it? In the surplus store? Is it bad? Not yet. Keep it coming. 50 feet. Get your soup ready. How's the leak? No worse. You want to come up? No, not yet. Lower away. I see something right under me. Easy. I'm looking right into the hole. into the hole. Maybe I can get in right now. You want to try? Yeah. It's no dive at all. It's less than 100 feet. But why go down? You're not in position. I'm not going to let him get his hands on those diamonds without me being there. I see it. I see the safe. To read zero. Is he free? Can you haul him in? He seems to be coming up, unless... Unless what? Unless the cable snap. Well, why don't you go down and see? Well, this is the quickest way. Keep him rolling. The nearest doctor is at the Angel Mission. That's five hours driving each way. I do the doctoring around here. Over my dead body. That's his breathing. If we don't do something to help that quick, he may not come out of it. I'll fix something for him. You're not going to let her feed him anything, are you? What do you think? Well, I don't think she's a murderess, but... Uh... But she's out of her head. I don't know if he's breathing at all now. This will stimulate his breathing. Give him about an ounce every hour. Well, it's not that we distrust you, Mrs. Peters, but... Put it down. Give it to him or not, as you please. Wait!
It's potent. But it won't hurt you. I'll let you know if there's any change. Okay, Florence Nightingale. Call me when you're ready to go off shift. Hit me. Eh. I just can't stand the excitement. Exotic Africa. Wild animals and tropical nights. Here I am teaching a professor how to play blackjack. Uh, I have 21. Well, okay, so he owes you another thousand matchsticks. Relax. Why doesn't she tell us what's going on? She just told you a half an hour ago. Sleeping peacefully and breathing normally. What do you want, a bulletin every ten minutes? Well, I'm going to see for myself. Don't start any trouble. How do you feel? No, no, don't stop. Yes, I finally made it. Soft clouds, golden stairways, trumpets, and angels. Not a chance, Jeff. You're in Africa. And from where I sit, it looks a lot more like the other place. Why didn't you call us when he wakened? He just did. Oh, sure. What goes on here? Are you getting time and a half on this job? Why didn't you call us? I told you I didn't want any trouble. What do you expect the phony caveman act to get you? I told you to stay away from him. Now I'm going to give you the only kind of lesson you seem to understand. <laughs> You'll have to come back. How's Jeff? Oh, he's okay. I'll talk to him after a while about what happened at the wreck. Well, they say of the walking dead that their souls can find no eternal rest, that they exist in torment. If only people could find peace of soul and mind while they're alive. We've had that fire going for two hours now. If Mona could see it, she could have found her way back. But you're inside that tangle you can't see very far. You wouldn't have ventured into the jungle by herself. They have her, I'm sure. We'll have to go after her, then. To the graveyard? I'll go, too. Sure you want to go along? Well, I'd like to help. This won't be any sightseeing expedition. If they've had her this long, it won't do any good. They'll get you all. Should be right about here. I clocked it on my way back last night. You want to use the very gun again? You want a gun, Doc? No, thanks. I'll take an extra flashlight. All right, let's go. Here's the path. Hart and Johnny, you two bring up the rear. Keep a close watch out on both sides. Doc, you stay in the middle. You stay close behind me. Don't fire unless you have to. All right, let's go. side of the boulder. The old lady tells me this was a European cemetery for the people who dug the diamonds a hundred years ago. All right, Johnny, you two stay here. Any of them show up, try the flares. 
You want to come with us? I'll go. Okay. You carry the gasoline. Getting out of here, too. Doc, empty the gas on both sides of the door. All right. Okay, now, keep your eyes on him. I'll be right behind you. I'll try and hold him back with these flares. She is dead. Let's get out of here! said a word. Maybe she's been drugged or in shock. I think you'd better get her to bed. She's dead. The wife is dead, Mr. Harrison. You saw her walk in here. You all saw her walk. Look at her eyes. Not breathing. Cold as death. I won't listen to that crazy talk. You hear me? Now, no more of it. I'm going to put her to bed. Not in this house. Please, Grandmother. If we can take her out to the ship. No. I know this is your house, but I'm not going to move her tonight. Now, if you're afraid, you get out. I'm not afraid for myself. I'm afraid for you, for all of you. Miss Peters, would you help me put her to bed? What about us? Let them stay. First bedroom. You may need them. Mona, why don't you close your eyes and get some sleep? Jeff, you up? How's Mona? Uh, no change. You willing to go down tomorrow? Well, the safe's right there. I figure one more dive and we should be able to get to it. Why? You want to pull out? I ought to think about Mona. I ought to get it to a doctor.
crazy! She went for me. Tell Sam to bring up all the big candles he can find. Now, now, force her back to her room. With these, they're afraid of fire. I guess it's the only thing that can destroy them. She's sick, Mrs. Peters. She's out of her head, isn't she? I'm sorry, Mr. Harris. I know exactly how you feel. Far work here. I work underwater too. Keep that blaze like that, and they won't bother you. They'll stay inside. I understand. Unless they have another way out. That's uh, worth a try. We might have them bottled up. Anyway, you and your men will be all right if you stay near the fire. We'll be here. Let's go. The way I figure it, it can't be much of a safe. I should be able to cut it open in five or ten minutes. Now, while I'm burning off the hinges, you stand by with another torch. If any of them do show up, you hold them off with your torch. That fire keeps them out of circulation. It'll be dark before we're through. About that damaged compressor. I'm glad we found out before we dived. We could wait till tomorrow. I thought you wanted to pull out tomorrow and get Mona to Descartes. Another day won't matter. Look, day or night, it's dark down there. Besides, tomorrow I might have cold feet. Like you got now. Okay! Doc, you take care of the intercom so we can talk to each other, huh? Sure thing, Jeff. Harrison, can you hear me? I hear you. Air pressure okay? Pressure's okay. All right, I'll go ahead. You follow at 10 feet. And watch my line. Go ahead. Good luck, Jeff. Uh, you too, uh, George. I'm on the bottom. Can you hear me, George? I hear you. And I see you. Outside hinges. You know, I think I can get into her with a scout knife. This stuff is burning like firewood. I'll have the first hinge off in a minute.
How much longer? Just one more minute. I've got the hitches off. Give us the word. It worked. Where's Harrison? He's just breaking surface now. They're all over him. Four or five of them. Use the flare. Lost a lot of blood. He's in his cabin. We're running out of flares. Save him. Look, they're coming on board. Get the torches and the kerosene. Let's see if we can keep it. Take it. The cabin locks itself in. Lighter fluid, 
cleaning fluid? Anything that'll burn? Yeah, in the desk drawer. Give them those lousy diamonds! Don't anybody try that! You got a better idea? Yeah, we'll fight our way out. Who's gonna carry you while I do the fighting? I'll manage. <laughs> You're in great shape for running. Yeah, I'll be all right in a minute. I'll take this and make a break for it. If I get through, I'll head for shore in the launch. They'll follow me and that'll give you a chance to get away. Don't try it, Jeff. Not so bad. Take it. Listen, there's a whole flock of them after this. I'll be here in a few minutes, and they're playing pretty rough. And I don't want to be around here when they get here. And I don't want Jan around, or you either, Mrs. Peters. I figure we can get into the car, take Mona, and clear out. We can meet up with Harrison at Dakar. Well, I'd split my end of the take with you. I figure you've got something coming after all these years. That is, if there is a take. I'm still not sure we found the diamonds. How do you get this open? It's older than the pyramids. They didn't have any springs or screws, of course, but they did know something about levers. Usually. Give me a scarf, quick. Get the launch. Start it up. We'll be going back to the boat in two minutes. If any of them show up, hold them off with the torches. <coughs> Bring me that chest. So if there's any funny business, I'll shoot you for trying to steal the diamonds and deserting us while we we're under attack. Well, that's not true. He took all the risk himself. Listen, Harrison. I haven't the time. TV and Johnny are getting steam up. Mike and Tony are waiting at the launch. I'm taking Mona and the diamonds out of here. I just wrote a new deal. Give it him. Maybe you got it open. How are you gonna know? Oh, please don't. You'll ruin it. I'll find a way. If you follow me, I'll kill you. But the diamonds should really be yours. You found them. You saved them. Thanks, Doc. Come here.
We have to make a run for the launch. Understand? Come on. Come on, get in. So fast. Let's get him inside. But you don't even know for sure if they want the diamonds. Maybe they just wanted the chest. We could have seen the end of them. They want the diamonds. They'll be back when they find the chest is empty. But how could I destroy them even if I wanted to? Cast them to the wind. Scatter them over the sea so that no man will ever find them. Come with me, Janet. We can be on the ship in a few minutes and out in the bay in ten more. <laughs> where will they catch us? In New York? No matter where you go, they'll follow you. Well, I'll get rid of the diamonds fast. I'll turn them over for cash. They'll be sold in every capital in the world. <laughs> what would they do? Pick at all the jewelry stores in Fifth Avenue? Oh, look, Jan, I want you with me. I want you to enjoy the money, too. I want you to marry me. I think I'd like that, Jeff. I can't go. I can't leave like this. You mean you believe all this, too? That if I jump the diamonds, they'll disappear? Yes, it's true. They'll stop walking the earth. They'll find their eternal rest. The diamonds must be destroyed. You can't rob them of this. Jan. She believes. She spent a lifetime believing. You can't rob her of this. Well, I can't throw them away. Maybe I wish I could. I'm going to take them with me. And you're coming with me, too. Both of you. I can't leave you behind. Not where they're still prowling around. I'm staying right here. But you can't stay here now. It's too dangerous. I'm sorry, but if I have to, I'll carry you. I believe you would. We don't have any time, Mrs. Peters. I'll put you off wherever you say. If you like, I'll arrange to get you back here later. Help her in. What are we waiting for? Please, not yet. We're safe enough now. Captain Peter, must you go on? Okay, take them. The diamonds, Mrs. Peterson. They're yours. Do what you want with them. Jeremy Peters, at long last. Probably never be rich again. 